I'm here for other children. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering and because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. I'm here because those people are mostly children. We have got to understand that the poor are all around us and we're ignoring them. We have got to understand that these deaths are preventable. We have got to understand that people in third world countries think and care and smile and cry just like us. We have got to understand that they are us. We are them. Rachel Corey, born on April 10, 1979, was a member of the International Solidarity Movement, a group which opposed the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. On her independent study program, Corey arrived in Palestine in January 2003. While there, she became more and more horrified by the violence and poverty which the Palestinians lived in and the trauma suffered especially by the children. Some months before, the Israeli army had been trying to create a security zone by bulldozing homes around Rafah, Palestine, that they considered safe houses for Palestinian fighters. Korea and other members of ISM wanted to call attention to the Palestinian plight and help the Palestinians withstand the Israeli forces. In February, Korea successfully participated in the group's plan to stop the destruction by becoming human shields, that is, using their bodies to block the destruction. She was not so fortunate the following month. I think it has become clear that their, this government does not care about the safety of its own people and doesn't care at all about the lives of Palestinian people. Um, I think it's, a, it's ridiculous that my government supports this government and referred to Ariel Sharon as a man of peace. Um, it's clear to me, being here, that Ariel Sharon is invested in perpetuating a cycle, well, perpetuating violence. On March 16, 2003, Corey and seven other members of ISM took their positions in front of the few remaining homes in Rafah. Consistent with the group's plan, Corey knelt down in front of the home she was trying to protect and watched the bulldozer approach. Just after 5 p.m. local time in Rafah on that eventful day, she was crushed by the bulldozer. Suffering massive injuries, she was rushed to a hospital where she was pronounced dead at 6.30 p.m. It was uh, a Sunday um, afternoon in Charlotte, about noon actually, and I received a phone call and my uh, son-in-law, Kelly, was on the phone and um, he asked if Craig was there. And something about the way he asked made me realize, I, I felt right away that something was wrong. And, and then I asked, why, Kelly? And he hesitated for a minute, and he said, we've had some very sad news. And then my daughter, Sarah, I could hear her in the background, and she got on the telephone, and she said, Mom, it's Rachel. And I think the first words out of my mouth then were, is she dead? Not long before her death, Rachel had written to her father from Rafa, This has to stop. I think it is a good idea for all of us to drop everything and devote our lives to making this stop. It is time to try to stop this, to show our solidarity with Palestinians, and do whatever can be done to inform everyone in the world about the occupation of Palestine. All the freedom-loving people must stand and try their hardest to free Gaza, to free Masjid al-Aqsa, and to put an end to this occupation. Imam Khomeini, the leader of Islamic Revolution of Iran, declared the liberation of Jerusalem a religious duty to all Muslims and announced the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan as Quds Day. And since then, every year in many countries, demonstrations have been held to support Palestinians and to condemn the Gaza siege. Isn't it time for all the people around the world to become aware and to wake up the international communities?